Well, thank you guys for coming. Um, I'm Joey. I'm uh, the lead UI developer here at Quid. I've been here for the last three and a bit years developing um, what I think is a pretty cool data visualization product. Uh, if you guys can pick up an accent, I do have one. I'm from New Zealand. Um, moved here three and a half years ago just to kind of compelled by the, the technical challenge that we're trying to solve here at Quid. Um, what we're really trying to solve is how to, how to have our users understand really large amounts of unstructured data. Um, so we're not, we're not really tr pulling together charts of uh, numeric data. Uh, we're, we're really taking unstructured data, that means text and, and lots of it, and really trying to help users understand it in a, in a very much, much quicker way uh, than you normally would by reading. <coughs> Uh, so in the last uh, three and a half years, I've, I've really enjoyed seeing a, a brand new idea um, come into to kind of life, uh, building, a, building a product, building a platform, and, and finding a product market fit, and starting to see some commercial success. Um, we have uh, quite a few enterprise clients now, over, over 200, I believe, uh, active users. So the, the, the focus of my talk is going to be about what I, I perceive to be the, the core kind of technological advancement that QUID is making. Um, and, and, and it happens to be about graph theory. So if my talk is too technical for you guys, I apologize. I'll try to keep it uh, pretty, pretty consumable. Um, but inside and out, QUID is all about the graph. <coughs> I'll be talking, I'll give, I'll give you guys a, an overview of graphs and sort of common examples of graph theory and common sort of technology products that you guys have probably seen before. I'll, uh, I'll use this, these terms, these graph theory terms to describe what QUID actually does under the hood. Um, and then I'll give you guys a quick demo of QUID. So first things first, what is a graph? Um, when, I, when I'm talking in this talk about graphs, I don't necessarily mean charts. So charts like scatter plots, or you know, plots like scatter plots, charts like bar charts and histograms, uh, and not really what I'm talking about. Um, I'm using the more mathematical definition uh, where a graph is composed of a set of things. Um, technically, we call these things nodes or vertices when talking about graphs. But they can represent anything in a model. Um, and it also consists of a set of links which connect these things. Um, and we call those edges. Uh, <coughs> it's still quite a simple thing. It's ju just two things. Things and the links to pull them together. Here is a very simple visualization of a graph. Um, you can see. In this case, we use circles to, to represent the things and lines uh, to represent the links. Uh, in, this, in this example, we have arrowheads on the lines uh, to, to kind of show that the links themselves are directed by nature. Uh, and you can see there are different sized things. Uh, so we use size to kind of show a little more information, typically numeric information about uh, the thing. In this case, the, uh, there is a meaning behind this graph. Um, the things in this case are web pages, uh, and the links are hyperlinks. And what this graph actually demonstrates is Google's PageRank algorithm. Um, you can see the larger nodes are, are typically uh, have more incoming links. Um, this is kind of the nodes that are more influential uh, within the, the sub web here. <coughs> Uh, you can see that uh, nodes with one incoming link, uh, such as one at the top right here, um, is larger than another one with this one incoming link, such as this one, uh, because the, the web page with the, in, the, with the link, link linking to it is actually uh, much more influential. So it's kind of like a voting system to determine who the most influential web pages are. But Google doesn't show you a graph visualization. Um, they simply use the algorithm 
uh, to give you a much better search result. Uh, but, but it could be argued that graph theory and the application of graph theory is what gave Google the competitive edge to give the best quality search results in the late 90s and beat out Yahoo and AltaVista and other competitors. <coughs> this should be uh, uh, a pretty recognizable example of another graph. Uh, <coughs> in this case, uh, the graph represents people and their pets um, on the, the Facebook social networking platform. Uh, the lines between people are, are very explicitly mutually agreed friendships between people. Um, what's interesting about this graph is that it's a little bigger than the previous example. You can actually start to see higher level information coming through the actual structure of the graph. Uh, so on the top right you can kind of see a community forming and then in the center and then one or maybe two communities forming on the left here. Uh, aside from uh, identifying communities, which we can do so algorithmically, uh, you can also highlight p potential people of interest by looking at the general graph structure. Um, so in the center of communities, you can see people who have a lot of friends, um, and, and very often more so than people on the outskir outskirts, on the sort of the outer edges of the uh, communities. Uh, you can also look at people who bridge the communities, sort of people here connecting them, and, and can kind of, you know, draw conclusions as to why they might be in that position. Uh, it might be that they change jobs or travel a lot, but they have a lot of kind of, they bridge communities of people. And one last thing to note is that you don't actually see this graph visualization in Facebook either. Their product is kind of delivering different sort of, it's not a visualization product, it's a networking product. Uh, but uh, they do use the graph data structure a lot internally to drive uh, better friend suggestor algorithms and uh, make better decisions in which, which show, you know, which ads to show uh, their users. Another, another example of a graph visualization is uh, uh, from a data set called the Netflix Prize. Netflix, a uh, number of years ago, published a lot of user rating data and ask data scientists around the world to, to use it to come up with an algorithm to improve their movie recommendation systems. Um, so this is one example uh, published on a beautiful www.com. Uh, <clears throat> what's interesting about this uh, graph is that although the, the films themselves, or the, sorry, the, the nodes themselves represent movies, uh, the edges used uh, to connect the movies are generated by an algorithm. So edges generated by an algorithm we, we call implicit edges as opposed to explicit edges that you might find in Facebook or PageRank or even LinkedIn. And what, what you see here is you can actually see by generating edges between movies um, and, and plotting the graph, you can actually start to identify communities of niche sort of communities of uh, films that you know have a lot of people liking the same kind of films. So around here you find all of the Star Trek films. Uh, there's sort of a couple of religious clusters down here. And uh, you kind of get the mainstream with the Fast and the Furious at the top. Again, this is uh, used by the data science teams at companies like Netflix. It's not shown to the user in their product. And that kind of leads to my point. A lot of these examples show that graphs are used all over the place in technology industry, uh, but are not exposed directly to the user. However, we also see that the graph structure itself contains a lot of sort of high level insights, uh, a lot of information that users don't normally have access to. And that's, that's kind of what we, we're trying to do here at Quid, hand that power to the user. So this is a, a, a quick description of our, our technology, sort of the, th the three main things we do. Uh, we allow a user to define the set of things that they want to visualize. Um, so we actually have several data sets. These things can include news articles, patents, blog posts, uh, descriptions of companies, 
and uh, tweets. Um, it could be really anything. The only requirement that um, our algorithms need is that they have some text associated with the things. Uh, we then use our algorithm stack to compute links between these things. Um, we analyze the text. We, we create sort of a vector space model. Uh, we perform dimensionality reduction and try to get this as fast as possible um, to produce, produce a graph which uh, connects similar documents. And then the third part is uh, that we give the graph directly to the user uh, with our interactive data visualization tool. Uh, so that leads me to the demonstration part. Uh, Quint is a, it's sort of a, a question answering platform of sorts. Uh, you can think of it a little bit like Google, but you ask it a lot more difficult questions. And, and it doesn't give you the answer directly, it gives you a data visualization which you can use to answer your own questions. Uh, we call it augmented intelligence. It's, uh, it's not yet fully automated. Uh, this is the, uh, the question that I've asked Quid. What does the data visualization technology landscape look like? Um, this is, if you imagine yourself as one of our clients who might be a, a decision maker on a corporate strategy team in a large sort of technology company, um, they really want to know who's out there in the data visualization space. They want to know who's the more interesting companies that they might want to possibly acquire or you know, uh, do mergers with or something like that. So. so after searching uh, quite literally data visualization in our company data set, uh, this is the graph uh, that I go back. Uh, you can see, in this case, the nodes are companies um, they're connected by links which are, you know, similar, similar companies based on the, the words they use to describe themselves. Um, and we, we run clustering algorithms to cluster the graph into different segments. Um, this is about 300 data visualization companies. Uh, doing, a, doing a company segmentation and, and kind of collecting that number of companies and doing a segmentation takes. It's, it's typically the job of a, a an analyst at a company like McKinsey or Bain, and they, and they, they spend weeks on this kind of stuff. Uh, I got this together in quite a, few, a couple of seconds, really. Um, so you can see the breakdown of the, the landscape. You can kind of see quite a cohesive cluster at the top right about uh, genetics, uh, sequencing, and that sort of thing. Uh, you get energy monitoring companies at the top. Um, you see other, other clusters that sort of make sense, medicine, uh, finance. Um, what's interesting to me is uh, this this web apps. It's a little bit more general purpose web apps. I'm gonna dive into that one if I can find my mouse. So here we go. Hopefully you guys see some familiar names. Here's Infogram. Um, we can read a bit of information about Infogram. We can now, uh, we purchase our data, so um, we purchase it from capital IQ, so it should be industry level data. Um, you can kind of see that they're based in Latvia. Um, they've raised $2.5 million in private investment. That sounds right, Nico's nodding. Um, if I show the first neighbors, uh, this will just highlight uh, the first set of neighbors for in Infogram. And uh, surprise, surprise, Silk shows up, which is great. Um, and if I zoom in a little bit more, so the label shows up. Quid's actually right there as well. Um, so I, I didn't do any fudging of the data. This actually came up with them both connected. So that was <laughs> very promising as I prepared the demo yesterday. <clears throat> um, so aside from looking at the, the graph and seeing the high level segmentation and identifying interesting uh, companies based on the, the sort of the structure of the graph. I can, uh, 
I can also uh, use some of our more classical um, charting tools. <coughs> not the word chart, not graph in this case. Um, so I'm going to move into a bar chart. <coughs> um, so this is, it, it takes the nodes that were companies and, and just moves them into a chart. And so you can see the same set of nodes up here, uh, but plotted by uh, the, the community that we have put them in, as well as um, sizing the bars by the investment received. So this gives you a good sense of which clusters, I'm sorry, which communities have received the most amount of uh, attention from investors. Um, in this case, you can see business analytics receiving a lot of money. You can also do a um, scatterplot view. <coughs> So I'm going to do a similar, a similar analysis on the investment received amount in the scatter plot. And I'm actually going to merge the companies into, to represent their, their communities. So here we can actually see averages over the communities. Um, the average founding year on the x-axis and the average investment amount on the white axis. And you kind of get a sense of which parts of the, the, the visualization landscape are, are new and which ones are receiving a lot of investment. Um, and you can start to, to make conclusions about what would otherwise just be unstructured text uh, and, and make real decisions based on this information. Thank you guys for listening. <laughs>